Wait, there's one there. So there you go. we're live. Uh, yeah. And yep. it says that we're live. But until we actually see somebody, which is 10 or 15 seconds. So so when they play this, if anybody plays this back, and some people will, they'll be hearing me talk about our Oh, world. okay. Okay. But I don't know the people in the live world are seeing us quite yet. So anyway, okay. good morning. Rick Sincere. <laughs> good morning, everyone. How are you? <laughs> it's good to see you today. I'm thankful that you're here with us this morning. If um, I, I guess we have a little bit of a delay, so, yeah. um, you know, that's that's okay. That's what we love. There's Luann. She's on. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the cookies, Luann. <laughs> How's the uh, sound, uh, Luann? Can you? Uh, <laughs> Is everything working okay? You can just text me because now we've got the new, the different format. All right. There you go. Good. Thank you. I can see, I'll see about 10 people and then maybe seven or so, and then I won't say anything after yeah, that. I'll be able to answer them. Yeah. 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 And it, that's about all we get anyway. People don't respond that much. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe they will. We'll we'll yeah. see. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's really interesting. I heard a gentleman this morning um, talking on Christian television about how he was uh, how he saw a vision and and what he called the triple threat. He 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 thought about that that there, these people were in the stadium and they were being healed and delivered and and they were being saved and all these things were happening and he called it the triple threat and then he said, you know what? That reminds me of the Great Commission. And you know what? I think he's right, you know, because we're supposed to go and we're supposed to tell the gospel to people. We're supposed to heal them, the, the healing, and we're supposed to del have del uh, deliverance by, you know, demon demon deliverance and, right. you know, having people delivered from demon possession and that, stuff, and that kind of thing. And so I thought about that. I thought, wow, that's pretty good because that's kind of the stuff we've been talking about. And he said it reminded him that he felt like God was going to do another book of Acts conversation. Um, and it reminded him of that, which I thought that's interesting. It, it's very interesting. This happens all the time to me when, when we feel like God's take, taking us somewhere and we're supposed to, we're supposed to um, study certain things or, 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 you know, talk about certain things. All of a sudden you hear people on the radio, you know, and they're from all different denominations and they're from different theological backgrounds, right. but they are all are talking about, okay, God's going to do a, a new acts or, or, you know, there's going to be a filling of the spirit in the world or whatever. What, so, you know, whatever we seem to move towards, I seem to hear it all over the place. And, and it's, it's really interesting. So I don't know, prepare. <laughs> we are in the last days, remember? Right. And, and we are looking for what, what's happening that the, with the, um, with the Joel prophecy, we're looking for that to, to take place in our man. life. He's, he dreamed a dream. Before. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we're, we're looking for that. And so it's, it's a, it's a blessing and he backed it up with scripture. You know, it wasn't just like, you know, I saw this and you can't find it in scripture anywhere, but this is amazing. I mean, cause that's exactly what Jesus told us to do. So I, I thought, wow, okay, you he's know, not talking about handling snakes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's not, he's not way out there talking about crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. He's talking about biblical stuff, and uh, so I just think it's amazing that we see, um, we see other people beginning to to hear the Holy Spirit speak to them about it as well. So that's good. That's good. So anyway, I thought that was great. I, I'm I'm excited about this new vaccine that's coming out. I uh, there was a, a long I didn't see much I didn't see much of it. I saw a glimpse of it or, or clips of it, I guess, of the conversation that President Trump had about the vaccine that's coming out, and I'm excited about that. And that's been at warp speed. That's what they call it, but it really has. And it's I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the way that God has has created mankind. That we are that we have that part of God, that intelligence of God to do the kinds of things we need to do. And he gives us these wonderful, miraculous things to happen. That's to me, that's, that's, those are miraculous things as well as oh, yeah. somebody just laying on hands and healing and having a healing, you know, those right. are miraculous issues to, to be able to have the science and the, and the intellect and the, and the way to create all of this and disperse it all in this amount of time is just amazing. And, and I want to, I want to give uh, kudos to president Trump and his team for, for doing that. I think that's, amazing and i know some people won't but i don't care i just i and it's not a political thing i just think he deserves it i think he deserves people to say thank you sir for for working so hard to help us get get to this point so that's a great thing mm -hmm. um i i see people i see people all over with, with small businesses again and and i my heart hurts for them i don't know i don't know how some of these people are going to make it and uh, we just need to 
pray that they can trust Christ. I hope that they know Christ and we can pray that they trust Christ, that God can, can help them. Well, they're hoping it opens them. before Christmas and New Year's because that'll right. be, at least they'd get that 10, two week window, you know, after the 21st. So, right. In, here in California, anyway, I, are they shut up there in uh, Seattle? Or, uh, uh, not in the same way, but they went, they would close things again. Yeah. But not in the same way. I mean, I, I, I've, I got probably, six alerts that stay at home alerts on my phone. Yeah. Uh, we got those last night, but can, yeah, um, yeah. I'm talking about restaurant patio eating. Can you eat at a restaurant there? Uh, the only, re the only restaurant eating I think here is takeout as well. Okay. Yeah. So in the same yeah. situation. Yeah. I think it's the same way all up and down the coast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the, the three governors have, have done yeah. that, but they're all out eating together. <laughs> <laughs> you know, th I think that's one of the things that bothers me the most is, is that they really are. I mean, I, I heard on the news again, or maybe I read it um, about the group of people who were in San Francisco lawmakers. Mm -hmm. There were six of them from six different districts and whatever. And they all were out eating, sitting together in a restaurant in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. And people are going, how come you guys get to do this? And nobody else does, you know? Yeah. And then some of the lawmakers went to Hawaii yeah, and yeah. A fourteen day quarantine there, and they didn't. Yeah, yeah so. uh, you know, I, I don't know. I just it's and and people are saying, well, what do they know? Why are they not afraid? Well, if they're telling us all to be afraid, what do they know? That's so. Then it just builds conspiracy theories. Right. <laughs> yeah. well, it's, it's, a, it's a trust issue. Yeah, it, it just gets blown out of course. So, well, again, that's our prayer for me. That's my prayer is to pray that our country is is inundated with the truth of Christ and, uh, and that the truth be known and that good things happen because the truth is known and we move from here. Yeah. So that's really what I hope takes place today. And, and, how, and, and every day that we uh, share the gospel, especially every day we share the gospel. I hope that the gospel is, is being taught last night. I, I got home just in time to go pick up Lucas from his youth group. And he, he took a kid with him for the first time uh, one of his friends and, uh, he, he's not a Christian. And I, and I asked Lucas, I said, well, what'd they talk about? He goes, I don't know. <laughs> I said, okay, good. I, so I, I asked the other kid, I, his name is Mason. I said, Mason, what, what did, uh, what did they talk about? He said, well, they talked about Adam and Eve and about sin and how sin came into the world. And, and, huh? and I said, really? And he said, yeah. And I said, and how, and why we have death and the things we have is because of that. And I said, okay, that's good. And I said, I said, well, did they tell you the, the good news of that? And he said, no. And I, so I had a chance to witness to this little boy, this, this 16 year old kid, he's not a little boy, 16 year old kid on the way, taking him home. So I presented the gospel to him. And so I, I, I asked him, I said, can we talk about this again? And he said, yeah, I want to. I said, okay. So I think that's cool. So, yeah. We're reaching out to people. <laughs> he's, he's got a he's got a good name to change. You don't want to be a Mason. You want to be a Christian. Yeah. <laughs> hey Mason, come on to the Christian. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so good. they have youth group, huh? Yeah. Yeah, they do uh, have youth group. Gather doesn't matter the number and everything. No, it doesn't seem to up here. They can do they can do church. I think I think they're getting. I think honestly, governors are becoming afraid of of what's happening in like, you know, Newsom got his hand slapped and said, you can't, you really overstepped your bounds. You can't do that. That's and so I, is what the discrimination lawsuit. Yeah, yeah. 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 So they're discrimination lawsuits. And I, so I think people, I think they're getting, I think they know they can't stop people from worshiping. And, right. and that's because that's our constitution. And that's why I think we should be so, um, so adamant about, <laughs> about being constitutionalist. I mean, it protects what we do. Well, you know? I think it's funny whose voices they hear because the church, you know, no church, but then yeah. the mosques and the temples, you know, the Jews and the Muslims uh, squawk yeah. and they, and uh, suddenly, uh-oh, uh-oh. Well they, well, they weren't even listening to the Jews. Look what look what uh, Governor Newsom, uh, not Governor Newsom, Qu Governor Cuomo is doing with all the Jews. He's saying, we're going to put you in jail. I mean, they yeah. were, but, but then some other people squawk and then, People start getting lawsuits and they get in their hands slapped. And so they're going, okay, we have to stop this. So, yeah. So, so I mean, indoors in Seattle. In yeah. Yeah. They're going to have an indoor church in Seattle. Yeah. The social distancing. and uh, Well, no, they're just, there's, I don't think there are any restrictions. All there were all the, all the kids were there and I saw them. They were all running around the parking lot and they were inside all running around inside. And yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I think it's, it's really interesting. I think people are getting, 
I think that I really do believe that our constitution is standing up to, to, and becoming what it's supposed to be for us. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that's a big thing because for a long time, I believe Christians, especially Christian churches have been, have been marginalized themselves um, in the political realm. And so I think that's changing. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for that. Yeah. (laughs) Anyway. So just keep, just keep praying and keep, uh, keep following those lawsuits. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's what our country lets us do. So let's do it. <laughs> Christian lawsuits. Well, the lawsuits aren't Christian, but the people who are doing them, hopefully they are. Yeah. But it is interesting that the, the, the people who on the left, like the ACLU and those people, they're not whoever they are. Who are they? Those guys. I think that's what their, their acronym is. They, they, yeah, ACLU, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, they don't care. <laughs> they used to be. They used to care. They don't care anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we used to care a lot about freedom in this country. We used to care a lot about freedom and personal rights. That was a big deal for us. And, uh, and yeah, we're being quite restricted. I agree. Yeah. 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 But there's joy in the Lord. So, yeah. So if you know Jesus, you're, you, uh, you don't have to worry about that stuff, truly, because you, you have a complete trust. You can, you have a complete exercised character that tells you you can trust Christ. And that's, that's the good part. So anyway, that's what I want to pray about today. And, and uh, I haven't, did, haven't, don't think I've seen anything on the prayer chain. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Gosh, I shouldn't see this. Wanda. My, my aunt, Wanda. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, was Wanda. We were praying for her this morning. Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, Wanda. I don't know. I think she's probably in her. Because I'm from a family where I'm an uncle of a guy who's five years younger than me, but I'm thinking if you're 65, your aunt's got to be 85, 90. She's like I don't know, but she's 70s probably. But but she's oh, Shelly's aunt, and uh, so, Shelly's aunt. Yeah, your aunt could be any age. So yeah, ten, yeah. Uh, just a few years older than Shelly. No, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not sure exactly. You told me the other day I wasn't supposed to say a woman's age on 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 the broadcast. I can't do that. <laughs> well, you, mar- you married a young bride. We'll say that. I did. She was 10. It was awful. <laughs> <laughs> and you were 40. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm old and she's not. <laughs> right. They never age. Yeah, amen. <laughs> the, bloom, the bloom never comes off the road. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, anyway, so, the, aunt, the aunt is over 70. Let's say. She's, yeah, I'm sure she's in her 70s. I don't know. Okay. Not, so, yeah, but, so she's in, she's in a danger because the, the, the text yes. said that she was sent straight to the ER for COVID. So it was COVID? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So she's having a rough time. The The good thing about Wanda is that she was the administrator for the hospital <laughs> that she's oh, at. I'll so, take care of her, yeah. Yeah. So they'll she take, a believer? Yes. Yes. She's a strong believer. Her and her family, they're all believers. In fact, some of them watch us. They might be watching us now. Okay. So um, from so Wanda and the, then Deanna. Deanna, yeah. Yeah. And Niall and, you know, and, and, uh, and Kathy and, you know, all the people we regularly pray for. But Wanda... Church. Church on Sunday, there'll be a big hole there at the front without you there. Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> Church is going to be just great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's all about Jesus, right? So, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's the, there's the fact that there's going to be there's going to be a, an outbreak of the Holy Spirit on Sunday in our church. It's going to be so awesome. You won't want to miss. You, you're going to you're going to be sad if you can't do it. Jesus one. and the circus wagon, you know, <laughs> right? right. The Billy truck, you mean? Yeah, <laughs> I call it the circus wagon. I know. I want to put some elixirs in there. You, you want to stand up with a box and say, "Tell me your ailment, I'll cure it." Huh? Yeah, grab it off the thing. You know, you know healing. <laughs> You never know. Yeah, well, let's not do the elixir, but let's do Jesus. <laughs> Jesus yeah. elixir, yeah. Amen. <laughs> All right. You want to lead us in prayer, bud? <laughs> um, dear Heavenly Father, we do pray for Wanda, and it's it's nice to fill in the gap or the you know information that she's not only uh, she's a hospital administrator, a little bit like Luann's mom was, mm-hmm. and a, but a believer. And so I'm sure she's in great care, not, not just with the people who at the hospital, but also with you. Yes. So I just pray for, you know, um, you know, quick recovery and that uh, whatever underlying things they have, you know, that um, you would just give her peace and comfort, especially uh, Rick and Shelly in this because they, they, you know, they're connected to her. And for Deanna, who we're all connected to, Lord, we pray that um, I, I haven't heard what kind of night she had or what kind of day mm-hmm. she's having, but I know we're going to see her this week at some point. And I just pray for um, for her recovery and for her. She's they're having her hunker down again. And I pray that, um, you know, this will be it and that we can she can, uh, you can heal. We, we Rick prayed yesterday for healing, Lord. I do pray for healing in Deanna. I don't, we don't, I don't believe the doctors know what it is, but it keeps, it's persistent and nagging. 
And so I just pray the blood of Jesus on, on her today, now, and on whatever that is that's, that's got her so down from, from the COVID. Yes. Um, and for Kathy, I pray for her continued recovery. I thank you for last night for Zoom and the women and the fellowship she had. And I just pray that mm-hmm. you know, her spirit would be yes, Lord. mending as well. That's what we need, Lord. We need it on the inside. The outside, you know, sticks and stones, the bones will heal on that. And so give her a good day today as, as, her, as Eddie left. And she's sort of on her own and sort of you know, now going to move operate in this new world. Uh, pray for the word today as we take a you know a look at Cornelius and really how um, you know three men in a row amazing um, just really from you the Ethiopian eunuch uh, yeah. was uh, spiritual you know he had a, Philip disappears uh, yeah. Yeah. is transported or whatever and then you know like uh, Rick says Saul of Tarsus is slapped in the face knocked down and now you know Cornelius there's a a, a sheet and a vision and we can clearly see how these are all from you, Lord. And so we just thank you for that. We believe in that today. And we we don't want to trust in our own understanding. We want to be flexible. We don't want to trust in our own works that we somehow we know how to present the gospel. Mm-hmm. Um, we want to leave room for you to do what you do in people's lives, Lord, however that is. And so today, as your word goes out and as we read this, Lord, uh, send your Holy Spirit out to, to teach us, to, you know, encourage us to do all the, uh, the things of you. You know, we give you room in this time now, Lord, and we invite you in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father, for all the things that you have given us, all the privileges you have bestowed upon us, all the favor and blessing that you have laid, Lord Jesus, at our feet. And we are so grateful. First and foremost, Lord, we are thankful for your forgiveness. We're thankful, Father, for your son, Jesus, for his cross, for his death and resurrection. Mm -hmm. Father, we are so grateful for that. We're so grateful, Lord God. We can't say enough words, and we don't have the adequacy of our words to even tell you how grateful we are for what you have done for us and for giving us of our sins. We thank you for being the solution to our problem. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, Lord God, that your grace stepped in and reversed the curse and gave us a solution to the sin that that's brought death. And we pray, Father, again, that you would forgive us of our sins that you would cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pray, Father, that you would allow us to be filled with your spirit. I pray every moment today, Lord, every person that's listening to this or will listen to it in a a while or no matter when, I pray that they'll begin to say, fill me with your spirit, fill me with your spirit, fill me with your spirit at every turn of their day. I pray, God, that you will teach us what that means and how how to operate in that and how to walk in that and how to have the face of an angel as the as we don't we're not really literally stoned but we're the stones are cast towards us by satan as all his minions in the world that we live in and the cares of this life lord help us to have the face of an angel help lord jesus our character to be seen and help your glory to be given out from us lord god we pray that you're glorified through our life we pray in, in great thanksgiving father for that we thank you for giving us that salvation Thank you for giving us the filling of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for for giving us the face of an angel, Lord Jesus, to face the day that comes to us. And we are so grateful, God, that we can look in your word. Thank you, God, that you have given us your word, that we don't have to just rely on dreams and visions, that we can test everything that comes to us. And we can measure it against your word and we can see, Father, its validity or we can see, Lord, how it doesn't really fit. And I thank you, God, that you help us to discern all things through your word. And I thank you for that special blessing that you give us. And I thank you for the blessing and the, and the giving of the triple threat, Lord, as this pastor says today, the triple threat, the, that we can share the gospel of Jesus Christ, that we can offer healing in the name of Jesus, and that we can cast out demons in the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord God, for giving us all of those things. And we thank you for blessing us in a great and mighty way with your word today. As we read it, Lord God, we pray that you really would transform us, which means develop our character. Father, our character comes from you. And we ask, Father, that you give us those things today that we need to develop it in the way that pleases you. We thank you for that. In Jesus' holy and precious name, we are so grateful, so thankful that you are such an awesome God. And we come to you today. We ask that you teach us in all ways. In Jesus' precious, precious name we pray. 
Amen. Amen. Well, he's uh, God has been so good to us, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah. He's a good, good God. Fill us with your spirit. Fill us with your spirit. Fill us with your spirit, Lord. So we're in verse 30, aren't we? Yes. Um, you want to catch us up to where we were yesterday? I mean, give us a few minutes of where we were at yesterday. Um, okay. Well, um, Cornelius, um, he's a, it says he's a devout Jew, which means that he, he, was, a dev he was devout. And yeah friend of the Jews. And so he's a, he's a Roman centurion, lives in Caesarea. He's probably got a hundred men over him. He's under, he's in the cohort, the Italian cohort. Um, and he has a, an angel comes and tells him to go to this guy, Simon Peter, who's staying yeah. at Simon the Tanner's house. And so he sends a couple of men and, and, and then we switch to Peter and he has a sheet come down with uh, kosher and unkosher animals. And he says, uh, and it says, arise and eat. And he goes, no, I don't eat unclean things based on the law. It does it three times. He's hungry. And then and then the men show up at his house and the Lord tells him, the spirit tells him, they're from me. He sees them. He invites them in. Uh, they spend the night. And then he goes. And now he's at Cornelius's. And Cornelius basically worships at his feet. He goes, no, no, I'm a man. Don't do that. Even though Jesus took that. And then um, he says, OK. Uh, he's got, and he brought all his friends and family to meet Peter. And Peter brought kind of an entourage with him. And Peter's saying, what do you want from me? And I think now is when Cornelius says, I don't know what I want for, you know, they've both just been open to the word of God. Right. It's one of those Holy Spirit vision, vision, where vision meets vision kind of thing. They right. both have a vision. And yeah. Peter's going to yeah. be the one to figure it out because just like we, um, when we come in contact with somebody, well, like you did with Mason last night. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't know the Lord. You do. So, you know what he needs, you know, whether it's he doesn't know what he needs, like a, a child, you know, a right. baby. So Cornelius doesn't know what he needs. Peter does. So Peter's going to give him the gospel. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. Right. That's, that's so, a great summary. Thank you so much. Yeah. And and in verse 28, he says, look, I'm not supposed to be meeting with you <laughs> yeah, <he's saying. laughs> because that Jewish law says I'm not supposed to be doing this. But I am here. I am. Here, 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 Ricky, for you to start your next sermon, get up and say, you know what? I'm better than all you people. and I shouldn't be here, but I'm God wants me here. So I'm going to tell you about it. It's not lawful for me to be with all you heathen here. Yeah. You pagans. I don't know what the world I'm doing here, but God sent me. No, yeah. Just... Mason, I can't be in the same car with you. But let me tell you about about the fall and then the good news. <laughs> yes, that wasn't quite like that, but not a great way to start. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so we're in verse 30. Uh, Cornelius replied, What is he replying to? He's replying to this thing. So, what can I help? What can I do for you? And so Cornelius replied, Four days ago, I was praying in my house about this same time, three o'clock in the afternoon. Suddenly, a man in dazzling clothes was standing in front of me. He told me, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard, and your gifts to the poor have been noticed by God. Now send messengers to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. He is staying in the home of Simon, a tanner who lives near the seashore. So I sent for you at once, and it was good for you to come. Now we are all here, waiting before God to hear the message the Lord has given you. So... He, we've already read this once. This is like the second time we've heard this this story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. this is the Jewish way of telling things. Yeah, um, yeah. A little pressure on Peter now because, you know. But we've always got a message. In and out of season, we have got a message for people. Yeah, yeah. So, absolutely. absolutely. But he has a he has a special message because he saw he saw the sheet come down and he's yeah. figured it out. And so now he's, he, now he's got a message, a message that he didn't previously have till this time. So this is... Right. This is just an, it's not a new message. It's an add-on to what is, it's, it's an add-on to who we could share it with. Is, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. And it's actually, um, it's new to Peter. It's, it's a revelation to Peter that, you know, right. this, this is what Isaiah was saying. And now, you know, you connect the dots with Peter. So yeah, you're right. right. It's nothing new at all. Right. But. Yeah. So he doesn't change the, what, the reason I'm saying that is because I want you to know, God doesn't, God didn't change his message. No, that's not that's not what he did. He just he just said now it's now is the time that you should step into to, to all the world. <laughs> you know, I was thinking when I was riding my bike this morning about the Ethiopian eunuch because Cornelius is the first Gentile in the church, right? 
I think so. Well, is the well, Ethiopian what about, I know. what about the eunuch? Well, everywhere I've read it, this is the beginning of the Gentiles in the church. It's a, Scott was telling me yesterday, he, you know, he's, yes, and this is a you know, watershed moment. Well, the eunuch, was he Jewish? Because the Queen of Sheba had gone like a thousand years earlier to Simon. So she brings Judaism, monotheism back to right. Ethiopia. Right. And the eunuch is coming from Jerusalem. So maybe, and then he's bringing, he's got a Bible. Well, he's got the scroll of Isaiah. Right. So, so he, he could not considered a Gentile or. Well, I, I, he's probably because of all of that. I don't I don't know how a Gentile gets gets um, the scroll to read. I don't know that. You know, it's Cornelius different than uh, the eunuch, though, because uh, one because one's so the eunuch's like Paul. Well, I think I think the eunuch is probably a proselyte. OK, so he is, he's he's uh, he is a, he's a Jew. Yes, yeah, okay. but 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 there are Jews in Ethiopia too, right? Yeah, no, no, no yes. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if she if, if the Queen of Sheba brought back Judaism, then right. he's Jewish, and yeah. so he's just going to a festival. He's coming back, and now he's he's transformed because he finds out about Jesus. And yeah, and, and and he knows he knows what this. That's a, it's a very interesting conversation that you're having because. He, he obviously knows he's supposed to read this literature, like it's important for him to know this stuff. Right. But he doesn't understand what it means. And it's a very important part. I mean, it's, he's, yeah, he's at a part where, because a lot of Jews just stay Jewish and miss the Messiah. Yeah, you're okay. So the, Cornelius really is the first Gentile because we'll consider the Ethiopian Union a, a Jew. Yeah, I think that's probably historically probably okay. the conversation. I just wonder why people don't mention him first, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just I just assume, uh, and again, we don't know, but I guess I just assume because he has the scroll and he's coming he, from a festival. So yeah, okay, yeah. all right. So that clears. It. Yeah, that's what I thought because all the commentaries. Um, he's just one more Jew. The whole church is Jews. You know what I mean? Uh, the thirty, the three thousand at Pentecost—they're all Jews. Yeah, to and this so, point, they're all Jews. So yeah. this guy's just another Jew. So Cornelius is the first not a Jew, even right. though he's devout. He was devout to something. Yeah, he's a heathen. He's a, he's a he's a uh, a pagan. Well, yeah, and and think about it. The Sanhedrin wouldn't care if these were non-Jewish people following Christ. Right. They would okay. give a rip. Right. The Sanhedrin and the Pharisees wouldn't care if these were Gentiles. That yeah, they want to lose their congregation. And so they would yeah. accept the Ethiopian eunuch. The Sanhedrin accepts him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but what not, I think. But not Cornelius. Right. They would right. not go into Cornelius's house. They would not do anything with Cornelius. But if you become a Jew, you're suddenly clean. Well, this, yeah, that's interesting because this, this guy, he was a friend of the Jews. But Peter said, even though Peter, even though Peter knows he's a friend of the Jews, he says, I'm not supposed to go into your house. Right. So, you know, so, yeah, you you like Jewish people and you like our God, but I'm still not supposed to hang out with you. That's, you yeah, know, until you're circumcised or right. whatever you want to do to you. Yeah. Until you follow the Jewish law, you're you're yeah. you're a heathen. You're a pagan. Yeah. yeah you're unclean. OK. Yeah, so, right. the eunuch, so the eunuch's not unclean. No, I don't think so. Which is ironic in itself because he's a eunuch. Well, yeah. Well, there's different ways to become a eunuch, but yeah. I understand, but still, that's an unclean deal for a Jew. So, right. um, okay. Yeah, I just I, I took a little walk there because we're going to tell people emphatically this is the first. This this is you. This is how Rick gets in the church <laughs> because of yeah Cornelius. yeah yeah Billy Billy's already there. He's a part of the three thousand that heard Peter, and he's there. Yeah. I haven't I haven't had the opportunity to accept that yet because nobody wants okay. to tell me about it. Yes, and yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> and so you're not the eunuch. The eunuch is just me too. Yeah, maybe that that's I guess I'm I guess that's where I'm at. I agree. I agree with that. It's the only one that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, okay. He, tells, he retells the story now. Peter, and we're in thirty four. Right. So so they retells the story. This is what happened. An angel came, said this to me, send for you. I did. Now I'm waiting for you to tell me what there is on your mind. T tell me what God is telling you, because it, it has to be something really important because I got a dream to, to summon you. So I had to have some kind. There must be something that you have to tell me that is so great that nobody else can tell me. Otherwise, I would have I would have wouldn't have had an angel come and say, look, go get him. <laughs> you know, so that angel makes this story a big deal. And this is what's great about the Romans, the Roman mind. You know, the Greeks are thinkers, but like you say, Plato and whatever. But they're also they're kind of flighty liberals where they they overanalyze stuff. And so like on Mars Hill, the Greeks are not that receptive. But Romans, they 
are like soldiers. They go forward, forward, forward. I got a vision. You had a vision. What is it? Let's go. I, I think that's a, you know, the Romans are ready to receive. It's, <laughs> yeah. a, it's a good mind this guy has. Well, yeah. Well, he's, 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 he's a seeker for sure. We know that. Yeah, he's definitely a seeker. Then Peter replied, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. Now, honestly, that is an amazing first statement from Peter. Right. Because that's an about face. This is just another about face from Peter. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. he's had several of these that we've seen as we've read through read through uh, one of the Gospels, Matthew and the first part of this, yeah. this book. He's had several about faces. Yeah, this is like, this is the conversion of uh, Cornelius, but it's also the conversion of Peter. To yes. Believe yes. In Jesus. And, he's, and, you know, I, uh, is in Colossians where Paul says, neither Greek nor Jew nor, you know, he says. Men you know, or women nor slave nor free. Yep. Yes, that's right. So that's, that's, that's just repeated again and again in Scripture. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the, the bottom line is, is with Christ, there's, <laughs> he doesn't care what polka dots you are. <laughs> he loves you. You know, your stripe isn't important to him. Uh, he created you special the way you are. But as far as spiritual, spiritual, your spiritual life is concerned, he doesn't care. He doesn't care. And, and he doesn't see people. He doesn't see people the way we see people, obviously. And so he's teaching Paul, uh, uh, Peter to see people the way he sees people. That's what right. he's doing. That's yeah. the, yeah, he creates us uniquely. Yeah. You know, we have a fingerprint where the hairs are our head. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Our uniqueness does not save us, you know, like yeah. right. I'm American or I'm Jewish or I'm Nazarene. Yeah. We can't hold on to that. Right. You know? We have to be born again into his family. So yeah. So everybody gets that chance. Everybody gets the solution to the problem of sin. Everybody. And by the way, this is my this yeah. is one of the things when I first got saved, um, which I mean I can't remember. I guess I was saved or just got saved, but where it said God is not a respecter of people. I thought, good. Who wrote that? You know, I'd never heard that before. I'd never because yeah. I wasn't much of a respecter of people myself. It, it's like it's to me. It's like a, a KKK member. Uh, walking into an African American church and and yeah. and saying, "Man, I'm you know I'm sorry, right. I was wrong, and I'm I don't show any favor. You are my brother, and you are my sister, and I you, and you really are. It, right. It's it's that transformation, which is a big transformation. We see that all the time. We we see prejudice all the time, but we rarely see a transformation away from prejudice." Right. So this is a very rare thing in, in humanity, it was a, and it's a thing we should have as Christians, honestly. So every nation he accepts, in, in, in every nation he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. So again, every nation, doesn't matter. This is the message of good news for the people of Israel. Now, that's interesting, isn't it? Now, read that again, because that's a really important statement. This is the message of good news for the people of Israel. It's not for the Gentiles. No. It's a message of good news for the people of Israel. So why would it be a message of good news for Israel? Well, they're the chosen people. He's the, he's the God of uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know, not Biff and Sally and Jordan. <laughs> I mean, you know, you have to, he want, he's the God of everyone, but he chose that instrument, the Jews. So I think, you you know, we're going back to the eunuch. Um, People could always be a pros. We should. What's that word? Proselyte. We should say they're. they're you know they. Um, they converted. Yeah, you can. Yeah, that's why. Like you, Sunday, you talked about converting, and I yeah. always say transforming because I didn't convert to Christianity. I'm not going to convert to another. You know, to Muslim now. <laughs> but but the Jews welcome. You know, they reach out. See, Christian churches don't reach out and say, "Be one of us," like be a Nazarene. They say, "Come to Christ and be right. a new creature." But the right. Jews say, "You're now Jewish. Follow X, Y, and Z." So any Gentile for all these thousands of years, I mean, Queen of Sheba could have been a Jew, but most of them didn't know they could. They didn't right. know. Uh, so they were kept out. And most Jews kind of honestly didn't want them. I don't think they don't even want the Sumerians, you know, the right. Sumerians. So um, what was your question? What, what is the. Well, he answers the question just right after this. Look, it says this is the message of good news for the people of Israel, that there is peace with God through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the ultimate. Yeah. Being a Jew is not the end game here. Yes, you're right. Yeah. 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 He, so he's jumping. So, up. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So what he's saying is this is interesting. What he's saying is those of us who thought we were 
and we are the chosen ones, those of us who recognize that we're the chosen ones, also need to recognize that God's peace is for every nation. Right. And so this message is for us as the Jews. God's peace is for every nation. Mm -hmm. Jewish people need to come to the point where they say God's chosen all nations, not just us. Right. God's grace goes to everyone through us, and right. it is through the Jews Yes. Because Jesus was a Jew, it is through the Jews that it comes. It's through Christ, who is Jewish. So it's through the chosen nation, the Jewish nation, that this comes. But it is for all people. And that's the part that the Jewish nation forgot. They yeah. forgot that they were they were the conduit by which God's grace was supposed to reach the rest well, of the world. They were world. just, for, without Christ, without the Messiah, they were just bringing people into a religion anyway. So what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Cornelius might have been thinking because he's a, he's a devout man oh this is my chance to be jewish i'm gonna get bar mitzvah now or so, i don't know <laughs> yeah yeah maybe huh and and peter takes him past that he goes oh no 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 it's not that it's it's yeah. Jesus. yeah yeah so it's not it's not no and maybe that's what he's trying to do right there what you just said maybe he's trying to say to be jewish is wonderful but that's not what saves you and that's going to be the argument in chapter 15 i think yes they yeah. say these Gentiles, okay, God wants a Gentile. Let's bring him in. Right. Do we have to wash him off first? Do we have to yeah, you know, what, make him what, Jewish? Yeah, what happened? What do, what does he or she have to do before we get they get to be Jewish? And I, right? I and I'm glad they say we don't have to make them Jewish. I, I don't want to make people Jewish. I don't I don't want to be Jewish. I, I wasn't very Jewish anyway. I mean, you know, it's it's, uh, it's well, not. I think I think that's what this this is about. I think what you're reading here is a, that conversation that the you're religion, saying. Uh, relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yes. Yeah, come yeah. to Christ. Come to Christ. No, don't come to Judaism. Come to Christ. I think that's what he's saying. It says, you know what happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after John began preaching the message of baptism. And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. So, so if if you if you want to have a scripture that says how how did Jesus do all the things that he did, it's right there. I mean, Peter tells you right there. He's saying they know this Cornelius, and he's he's talking to Cornelius's family and a lot of friends. So this is a pretty popular people that heard about this. this yeah, is, yeah, everybody knows who Jesus is. Absolutely. I'm not saying, did you ever hear this? He's saying you know about the John's baptism. You know about Jesus. Yeah, yeah. It says, then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. So that's because the Holy Spirit had anointed him. The Holy Spirit had come in and filled him. Mm -hmm. So that's how, that's, I, I love that Peter says that about Jesus here. It says, and we apostles are witnesses of all he did throughout Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him to life on the third day that God all then God allowed him to appear not to the general public, but to us whom God had chosen in advance to be his witnesses. We were those who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he offered to us to preach everywhere and to testify that Jesus is the one appointed by God to be judge over all, the living and the dead. He is the one all the prophets testified about, saying that everyone who believes in him will have their sins forgiven through his name. So that's so I think what what is happening with Peter is is he is finally real and he's he's already realized that Jesus is the Messiah. But what he's finally realizing is that his job is to tell everyone that Jesus is the Messiah. He realized that through his vision and through the calling of Cornelius. And so this is an epic event for all, for the world. And it's an epic event that will change the course of history and has changed the course of history. There would be no Christian if this kind of event somewhere did not take place. There would be no Christian outside the Jewish church. Right, that's true. No if this did not happen. So every single every single person that's a believer in Christ that's not born Jewish can thank Cornelius, I guess. Can thank that. can thank this conversation, uh, and and where did it start? Look, go back to that conversation about character. It started with Cornelius, who was a man. He was a devout, fearing, God fearing man. So he had a certain character. Character matters. 
-hmm. We just, we keep seeing this conversation over and over and over again in people's lives that we encounter here in the book of Acts. Character matters. And the character of Christ matters. Now, how did they have the character of Christ? Well, because, because I mean, they weren't Christians, so how did they have that character? Because you're born with your character. The thing that makes your character what it is, is how you live your life. That's what, that's what builds your character one way or the other. Your character is being built either positively or negatively. Right. But, if, but if you're a God-fearing person, your character will be built to a place where you eventually will have to know Christ because that's the, that's the only way. that Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. So every person that has a godly character, I believe, will come to the place in their life where they will encounter Christ. They'll have to say yes or no to him. I don't think every one of them will be a Christian. Yeah, but if they're really searching for Christ, yeah, if they're really searching for Christ, they're going to have to encounter the truth of Christ someplace. Yeah, there's a seeker. Yeah, it's a seeker, yeah. So anyway, this is a really interesting conversation. It, it really is. I, you said you talked to Scott about some of this stuff. What's Scott saying? Oh, I was just saying that um, chapter 10 and he said, yeah, that's what you said. He, he used the word, he used the word epic. He is powerful. This is uh, brings, um, you know, Scott into the church. It brings Gentiles into yeah. the church. Yeah. And um, that's what made me start thinking about the Ethiopian eunuch because he's not, but he's, but he's a Jew. He's, he's right. clearly, he must be a Jew. Um, I like how he says in verse 40 or 39, Jesus, uh, he did in the land of the Jews, whom they uh, hanged on a tree because he's telling the Roman centurion he was killed by your government. You know, because yeah. the Roman form of execution, right. Jews would stone. He wasn't stoned. Right. So the Messiah, the one you're to believe in now, the one that the Holy Spirit's going to fall upon you, your, um, your, your form of government put him to death. Right. I, I think it's interesting how th that's all that's true. So everybody, so everybody's everybody's responsible and guilty is what he's saying. He's just saying a negative, you know, while he's giving the gospel, he's he's telling the truth, and and the truth is, um, you know, is boldness and it's got a lot of grace in it. But it is, you know, he's pointing out to all these Romans standing there because um, they're still executing people. They didn't stop with Jesus. This is what they do. Yeah, and so you know. It's so a, it's a very pointed thing to say. Yeah, yeah, it is. You're right. So what does then moving up? Just yeah, little, still Peter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. verse, verse 40 is interesting to me. It says, um, but God raised him to life on the third day. Then God allowed him to appear not to the general public. Now, what does that mean? Well, it's what you were talking about, your 40 days and yeah. your 500 people or whatever the number is. Um, There's thousands of people he appeared to, 500 at one time, it says. in, in, in Yeah, but in it says he, showed, he raised him from, well, mine says and showed him openly. In other words, it wasn't a secret. He did raise from the dead. You know, we, we he can't find his body and he he's not a ghost and all that kind of stuff. And he's saying, but not to everybody. Um, so he's, I, I think, again, Peter's doing the exclusive thing, like the I'm one of the ones who saw him alive. I ate with him even. Not yeah, I think I think he's saying he didn't come to non-believers. Okay. Not he didn't come to the, to, to the general public or your, your Bible uses the word people. I think doesn't it? Mine's yes. It said he showed himself openly, but not to all the people, but unto yeah. witnesses chosen before of God. Even yeah. Though. General so, public or all the people is yeah, what it says. Same, yeah. Yeah. But again, I don't know his motive for saying this. He's just said something like, you you know, you killed him. The Romans put him on a tree. He's giving details that. Um, yeah, I I, but I, I think I don't want to read his motives. To me, it sounds like he's still being really kind of Jewish here. He's kind of showing off, you know, like. Well, well, I don't. I think that what he's saying is you're not going to you're not going to hear that. He, he was you're not going to hear people who were not believers say they saw him. What you're going to hear is that there are all there are all kinds of believers all over the place who are willing to testify that they did. And and I think that's important because he didn't just show up to everyone. He's only going to show up to people who who believe in him. Right. And, and I think that's that's what this is about. It's about it's about clarifying so that people people don't I think just a way to prove who Jesus is, you know. Well maybe it's uh, when the Holy Spirit's going to fall on him now anyway. So Peter right. gets Peter gets interrupted like he interrupts other people like me. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's going to get interrupted by, okay, they're saved. But he's telling them, you know, and maybe he's still not convinced that they can be saved. He's telling him that you have to believe to believe. You have to be, a, you know, you have to be saved. And, uh, and he's trying to convince them of who yeah. Christ is. Um, but I don't know. I don't know his motive. But he's, he's, he's well, well, I think he's in the I middle. think some people would say, well, how come he didn't appear to me? How come I didn't see him? How come the group of people that I'm with didn't see him? How come, how come the Sanhedrin didn't see him? How come the Pharisees didn't see him? Well, because they, they weren't believers. He only came to, to the, he didn't come to the general public. No. He came to the believer in Christ. So, because when he came to, when he came into the upper room, who were they? They were the believers. When, when Paul talks about in Corinthians 15, when he, when he goes and he, and he presents himself to over 500 at one time, they're believers. So, so it's to the believers that he goes. And, and I think that's really interesting. I'm coming. Okay, I'm a believer. I saw him. Here's all my credentials. He's bringing his credentials like Paul does. And now I'm yeah. bringing you. Do you think if he doesn't get interrupted, he's going to say, do you want him? Uh, right. Is that where this is headed? Do you think the, the argument goes this way? This is who he is. I saw him. I ate with him. He, he showed himself to believers only. Um, all the prophets. He's still giving who Jesus is. At some point, he's got to say, so do you believe in this? Is this what, you had to come to that point if you're going to lead that Mason to Christ. You have to say, well, some, in some place, some place you've got to get to the place where you have to say, you have to close the deal. If, I guess that's yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, do you think Peter's on his way to closing the deal is what I'm saying? Well, you know what? I don't think Peter has, I don't think Peter has any idea. Honestly, I think Peter's opening his mouth and the Holy Spirit's okay. filling it with words. Okay. Just like Jesus said he would do, I think it's happening, and and I think that's what's going on with Peter right now. Well, if I had to just, and I don't, you know, it's scripture and it's Peter, and I, I, I got, honestly, I do not want to judge his motive, especially the Holy Spirit, but he sounds a little arrogant here. He sound, he's got details in here that I, we really just don't need this, Peter. We just tell us who Jesus is and and give the invitation. But that would be my way, yeah. and the way that we have the Roman road now, but. This obviously works wonders, doesn't it? It's uh, yeah. I just I just think it's it's an interesting an interesting caveat, an interesting line to put in there that Jesus didn't come to all the all the people; he just came to believers. Which which to me would say, if you really want to know him, you better believe in him. <laughs> okay, I, but, yeah, but you say it's an interesting caveat. Yeah, it's kind of it's like yes. What are you putting that in? What do you? It's yeah. like the cross. Why are you mentioning the the, the cross that way? I understand red death, resurrection, the cross, but he tells yeah. the way he was killed. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> we don't, you know what? We're just speculating all this stuff. Yeah. And but, but we've just camped on for a little bit. Nobody, the other verses are the ones that are the controversial ones. The ones coming up right now. Yeah. Well, here's the one, here's the ones that get everybody's attention. Yeah, right. Yeah. But I think they go back to that, what we just talked about. So let's that's that's why I'm doing that. So verse 44. Uh, that your sins have to begin through the name of Christ is 43. The last of it, verse 44, even as Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit, that's why I don't think Peter had an agenda. Okay. I didn't think he opened his mouth and the Holy Spirit was doing what he wanted to do with Peter. The Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the message. The Jewish believers who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles too. Well, because they have an Old Testament understanding of the Holy Spirit. That's that's part of their problem. They don't have a developed theology of the Holy Spirit. That's the part of their problem. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter asked, can anyone object to their being baptized? So Peter doesn't say, well, are you saved now? Peter just says, look, you guys are... <laughs> The Holy Spirit's on you. You have to believe. I mean, that's. I'm just. I'm just. The Holy Spirit is actually conf affirming, confirming. Yes. Yes. Verifying. verifying. The yeah. Holy Spirit is verifying to Peter and all the other people there that okay. these people were were really believers in Christ. Yes. So can anyone object? Well, you have to be a believer to be baptized. That's what he says, because it's believer baptism. Mm -hmm. Now that they had received the Holy Spirit, just as we, uh, just as we did, so he gave orders for them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Afterwards, Cornelius asked them to stay with them for several days. Uh, well, yeah. So this is uh, this is like the Gentile Pentecost. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the Holy Spirit falls on them. And I, if you look at the, and I've looked at this, this word um, where Peter says the gift of the Holy Ghost, mine says, 
it's the same. It's a reference to Pentecost, the tongues of fire. Right. So I know we want to think that's a one and done, that that was different kind of tongues and this and that. But but Peter says these. Peter says these are the same tongues. We're hearing the same tongues that right. happened to us at Pentecost. I think if John MacArthur read this, we'd read it like this. Uh, John <laughs> MacArthur was astonished <laughs> because the gift of the Holy Spirit was coming out of you know Rick or something. You know, <laughs> and also you don't have to guess what the gift of the Holy Spirit is here because it actually says they were speaking in not just tongues, those yeah. tongues, the tongues of fire tongues. Yeah. So this is a stumbling one for me. Not really stumbling, but it's like because I. I don't know where to go with it. I mean, I, 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 I this is how I was taught about tongues. This is how I was taught that it's, um, it's, it's, it's a gift and it's, um, it's that gift and that it's, and that it's an, and it's evidence of the falling of the Holy Spirit and all that. And here you go. But, but then there's well, a, I could argue against myself also. Well, classical Pentecostalism uses this word that we just read. And, and I think comes to a place that they don't, most of them don't even believe anymore, but I think their, their, their theology has evolved as well. Okay. But it, you, they used to say that you don't have the Holy Spirit if you don't speak in tongues. Right. Yes. So, yeah, that's what they at used the to 80s, say. At least, because that's that's when I came. I went, I'm not Pentecostal, but, you know, I, I, was, yeah. I was a nothing. But And then I've heard even worse that you're not saved if you don't have, uh, if you don't speak, you know, which is. Well, well. And that's not a very hard that's not a very hard leap in theological senses to make because it, if you believe that you have the Holy Spirit when you get saved, <laughs> well, yeah. okay, then you should right. be speaking. Everybody should, the evidence, yeah, yeah. Okay. Everybody should have the evidence of speaking in tongues. But if you go to Corinthians, not everyone speaks in tongues. Desire the greater gifts. Now you have to take the whole Bible in context. Right. I, I know that, right. but um, this early church, and I, I and I can also understand why John MacArthur and J. Vernon McGee. I can see why they just they put this aside because yeah. they don't see it now like that. And they don't see it. It's not universal. But God's not universal. He loved uh, Esau. Jacob, I loved Esau. I hated. I mean, he's not universal in he he he. What is the scripture where God says, I will tell Moses, he says, I will bless who I bless and I will curse who I curse. You know, he's he's not capricious, like you say. He has reasons, but we don't always know his reasons. So I don't think we can turn this into a religion. And I don't think we can look at people like the Pentecostals and say, you're wrong. I mean, I think we just have to balance it. A little bit. Well, well, I don't think this is a pattern. I think, I think the error that we have is yeah. that we make this a pattern for every Christian. Yeah. Um, I don't think yeah. it should be a pattern for every Christian. Yeah. yeah. The only thing that you need to understand about being a Christian is, do you believe? It's a uh, personal relationship with God, but it's the God of the Bible. Because you're, you're going to come up with about some people who were baptized in uh G they had the holy spirit but they didn't know who jesus was and that they're going to scratch their head on that one too and say yeah. how do you have the holy spirit you don't even know well let's tell them about jesus so that's another one where we think there's a formula first this then that and there is order i think it's good that the church i think it was good you tell mason you know about the good news but eventually it's the holy spirit's work yeah it's not mine at all no. yeah yeah and it's the holy spirit it's right. not out of order but the holy spirit knows how to reach mason and how to reach cornelius we don't. Right, right. So right. Be open, like I think the great thing about Peter here, and boy, the way he's boy, he's Peter all the way through this, is he's flexible. He doesn't he he says, Well, it's the same thing the eunuch says, what's to stop me from being baptized? And he's saying, like, what does that really mean? Yeah. What's to stop me from being baptized? I think he's saying that he I guess the eunuch was saying, I'm a believer now. And I think Peter's saying these are believers. Is that what that means by what's to stop us from baptizing them? Yes, yes. Yeah, I think so. But but you have to, so go back to the eunuch because you keep bringing that up and it, there's a good point with the eunuch. There's I don't think when you read about the eunuch that you hear about speaking in tongues. Oh, no, no. You don't hear that at all. So so that's why I'm saying you have to be careful not to make this a pattern. Not a pattern. Because if you, you pick up yeah. John MacArthur, he wants to exit out. Right. Costals want to make it a pattern. I'm telling right. you. And I remember the first pastor I ever had, John uh, Michaels, maybe got it. Yeah, that's right. I used to call it. Well, whatever. And maybe not the first pastor, but he was, he was a good pastor. He said balance. There's balance in the word of God. Yeah, because, yeah. And I didn't know what he was talking about because I didn't realize how extreme people are in Christianity. Yeah, well, that's the problem that you can get. You have to you just what's the message of this? 
the message isn't that they spoke in tongues. No, or the, the Holy message Spirit. is that they believed. Yeah, that the Gentile that it's for the Gentiles. Right. The message is see, that's why I'd say you have to look at what the message is. The message is okay, it, it, it's not the message is okay, you believe. And, and this was in your life and in their life was it evidence. Why was it the same evidence for them as it was for at Pentecost? Why? I would say, and to be flexible is if God demonstrates himself in your life a way that I don't agree with, I'm not going to call you a liar. He demonstrates that way. And, and don't make me have him demonstrate. His, we're both. The bottom line is Jesus died on a cross and saved us. The, Jesus explains this in John 3. He says the light came into the world, but men love the darkness. So the message here is Cornelius loves the light. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. And the fruit of the fruit of the spirit is the, the Bible says the fruit of the spirit is it doesn't say it's speaking in tongues. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, yeah. gentleness, and self-control. And Galatians 5, 22 and 23. That's the fruit of the spirit. Now, do people speak in tongues today? Yes. Some people would say they don't. I, I don't know. agree with that. Why I do you do you know, if it's not, if it's biblical, let it be. Yeah, I heard yeah. about a pastor who uh, was lifted off the ground, let's say a few inches or something like that. And you say, well, that couldn't have happened. It didn't happen. Why not? But here's the bad part. That's all he would talk about after that. So right. he was the vessel that could be used. So if you're going to hang on your tongues or you're going to hang on your, any, you're being a Baptist or Nazarene or your visions, get off. You know, visions are, I agree with the guy. You said a guy saw the trifecta or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. Triple threat. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Yeah. I, I won't dismiss any of this. I'm I'm open to a lot of things like that as long as they're biblical. But right. let's not make a religion out of it. Is right. what I would say. So yes, this whole tongues thing here, and we've given you a very there's only a few minutes left. We've given you a bad. We're assuming you know what we know, but there in the church, there's um, this is an important scripture. These are important scriptures, and you you really should just be balanced with it instead of. The, the, it's not the message. It's absolutely not the message. Yeah, yeah. Look, that's perfect. What's the message of this scripture? What's the message? The message is that here was a man who was a God fearing man, who who God wanted to show in a specific way that he had the Holy Spirit on him, so that so that Peter and the rest of the Jews who were there would believe that the gospel was for the Gentiles as well. That's the message. And when that, Paul, that's Paul, all that there is. Don't make it more than that. No. Yes, that's yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. And if he did it this way, then that's great that he did it. And yeah. and God's always, I would also say this about God. When he does something, he's got many lessons, not just one. So he, he's got lessons to everybody in this. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, 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 learned and, something, and Cornelius learned something and the people around there and the, and the Jews were with him. Yeah. And the whole message of this is accept Gentiles into the body of Christ. Right. That's the whole message. That is the message of this scripture. Yeah. Now you can take all these other things that we're talking about and you can, you can run with them, but be careful. I would say don't, that's my message. Does yeah. it, don't run with them. Yeah. But I'm saying there are multiple messages. That's how a, a one pastor could teach this and that they're all good, but none of them are the main message. The main message is Gentiles. Uh, all people are equal at the cross. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't really see any other message in this personally. And by the way, I think we now know why Peter brought some uh, believers with him. Yes, uh, yes. My, of the circumcision, the Jews. Uh, right. Because if Peter just saw this himself, that'd be a hard sell. Right. It's it's verification. God always verifies what He's doing. He, so he always does it. Peter. In fact, that's what that's what. There's a gift of that. It's called the gift of teaching. Now you go, what are you talking about? Well, look, the gift of teaching is not somebody who's really a great teacher. The gift of teaching is somebody who does great research to verify a truth. Oh, okay. And so that's what the gift of teaching is. We we are we are practicing teaching, we're we're doing teaching, but we may not have the gift of teaching. Right. But a, a person who's really gifted with a gift of teaching will spend hours and hours and hours and hours doing research to verify a truth. Right. Well, th they didn't have hours and hours and hours to verify truth. They were just beginning. So God set this up so that there would be a verification. There would be someone to come along and say, like all the people that saw Jesus when on the in the 40 days, there would be someone to come along and say, this happened. I was there. I yeah. saw this. I, I remember I asking a couple of days ago, why yeah. is he bringing these, this entourage with him? Yeah. He's yeah. Of the Romans. And the scripture answers that. Like you say, if you read enough, going to answer it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Just did.
Yeah, yeah. I think that's what's happening here. I think we are seeing this truth being verified for the rest of the people. So, so Paul, so people could can, can listen to Peter and they could go, Peter, we love you and we respect you. That's great. Good job. And and not not have the enthusiasm about this event or not not really buy into it because their prejudice is so strong. So now they have to deal, they have to deal with it because they have eyewitnesses to it. And they can't they can't just say all of you are lying about well, this. Well, this is the yeah. this is the model of Jesus with 12 disciples. Yeah. It's the model they came back for 40 days to be seen by all those people. Right, right, right. Verified. Plus, plus, it's not just their word that verifies this happen, happened. It's it's now Cornelius and all the people that were with him. It's their lives and the way they're living their lives. Yeah, that, the that, yeah that verifies it. Um, the um, the like Mary treasured things in her heart. There's certain things that God gives you for yourself. The sheet was just Peter. Right. No one saw the sheet but Peter, and Peter could say, "I saw a sheet," and the other guys say, "Yeah, you probably didn't." You know, just like Philip said. Or Thomas said, unless I see him myself. Right, right. But the Gentile thing was for everyone. Right, right. So Peter doesn't need to go about starting a church of the sheet, you know, that it comes right. down. Yeah, right. I can give you individual things and bless you, but um, they may not be corporate. They may not be for everybody. And this may be one of those places where, sure, speak in tongues. Sure, this happened. You saw, you know, somebody in a piece of toast. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. maybe I'm too far there. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, yeah, I think there's individual, um, what's the word, um, revelation, and then there's general revelations. And this, yeah. we just saw it here. Peter had a specific revelation, which is for no one but him. It, it, it's for him, but it, it, it turns. Oh, scripture, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It turns general because it's a message for him to go start what's going to be so coming. What I meant was you're not now expecting to have lunch and pray at 3 o'clock or noon and see a sheet. Right, not, right. Yeah, God's not God's not gonna God's not gonna send another sheet vision because we, because that message has already been stamped for us to understand. Yes, I know. So that's what I'm saying about the tongues thing. Don't go looking for these kinds of things. That's right, right. Yeah. God's and, and, and Paul says, look, he said, I wish all of you spoke in tongues. He says that. So we'll get to the gift of tongues at, at a later date. But this word this scripture is not about tongues. So, and I know people, and, and the reason that, that and I know it's past time, but I know the reason that that is continually being brought up, Billy brings it up again, is because there's been so much controversy over this. <laughs> That's why he's talking about it. Because right. if you know church history, modern history in the church, you know, you'll know that since 1920s, people have been having this big argument. There have been church splits. Everybody's gotten mad at everybody. By the you way, know, I didn't know. I yeah. came Church, I said that you believe in Jesus. It was a big party for me. Hey, he came to Jesus. When I said, Hey, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Whoa, wait a minute. You know, it's like, I know you it, expected the same party. <laughs> I got slapped in the face. You know, I walked into something. If I'd have known, I wouldn't tell anybody. Right, you know, right. I tell right. It. And I, by the way, I don't, although I just did, but I don't. <laughs> although I, yeah. So, from so you can't just you can't decide from this conversation whether Billy speaks in tongues or not. That's not what he's talking about. What he's talking about here is that you you have to look for the message, don't go off on rabbit trails on stuff. Because it'll lead you down some roads that will be very destructive, and that they're not—they're not of God. Look, Satan wants to distort theology. He wants to distort our understanding of, of the Word, so that we can cause trouble. And, yeah, and we have to be careful of that. Important. This but, is doctrine is yeah. important, and this is a yeah. place of doctrine. Yes. You don't yeah. need to go to um, seminary. This is doctrine. <laughs> right. So just ask God. Cut cut out the middleman. Uh, speak to God. Let Him let Him show you what's right and true through the right. Word. Yeah. All right. We're uh, there are other places that will speak about that, and we'll get there. But this is not one of them. Yeah. 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 All right. You're his favorite. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you are his favorite. I do believe that, and I'm very excited to tell you that. I know sometimes it might get old for people, but look, you are his favorite. Sometimes people need to hear that. So you're his favorite. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow. It's good every day to hear that. <laughs>